Research, plans by researchers rather to find an HIV vaccine have taken a knock. The National Institutes of Health has stopped tests on more than 5,000 people in the country as it found the jab didn't work. Well, let's talk about firstly what exactly this vaccine was. I'm joined by the Medical Research Council's president and CEO, Professor Glenda Gray. Thank you so much for uh, your time tonight, Professor Gray. Perhaps before we go anyway, there seemed to have been some hope around uh, this trial that you had been conducting recently. Tell us exactly what the vaccine was expected to do. Sure. So we are, under, we are doing three large-scale efficacy trials in South Africa. And so this is one of three. This one was called HV10702 or Uhambo, which means the journey. And what we were doing was evaluating a, a, a vaccine regimen that was found to be efficacious in Thailand. And we adapted it to, to the, the circulating strain in South Africa and um, augmented it to try and in, in, improve the, the potency and durability. And so while this vaccine was quite immunogenic and while this vaccine was safe, when we put it into large scale um, testing to measure efficacy, we found that this vaccine did no better than the control in preventing HIV infection. The vaccine has been modified uh, from the RV144 TAR study and it entailed having a, a, pox, uh, pro, a pox virus boost with a, a, pox, a pox virus and a protein um, um, uh, um, uh, heterologous prime boost vaccine regimen. And so, um, unfortunately, this, this approach um, did, did not work. We do have other approaches that are in the field at the moment, and so, um, so we are evaluating a couple of strategies that are different uh, to see whether we can find an HIV vaccine that works um, in South Africa. Sure. I wonder, despite the fact that ultimately the vaccine hasn't been uh, as successful as you may have wanted it to be, what uh, is some of the data that, that you've gathered from it that you think uh, may be useful to some of the other trials that you're conducting? Yes, this trial will be very useful because it will help us try and understand uh, why we weren't successful despite this vaccine regimen being successful in Thailand. And so we will evaluate um, whether the clade, the circulating clade of HIV in South Africa was, was very diverse in comparison to what was happening in Thailand. We'll be able to evaluate the, the, the there's a difference, genetic differences between Thai people and, and South Africans and we'll be able to evaluate um, what was different that made our vaccine not work. And so even though this vaccine regimen may not have worked, we will get so much information about uh, what we need to do to derive the next generation HIV vaccine. So this vaccine is critical in trying to understand how to progress forward. We have seen that there's a huge HIV epidemic in South Africa and we need to continue to invest in vaccine strategies to try and control HIV in South Africa. Uh, you, one of the conversations that's always been had is the the time frames that are attached to any conversations around a vaccine. So given how long it takes to uh, be able to run trials, to test what works and test what doesn't work, um, how close are we if we're close at all? Yeah, these vaccine trials do take long and, and finding the right vaccine regimen to put into large scale studies takes years. So we've been working on this trial since 2009 and we have our results, you know, almost more than 10 years later. So that is why we have three other strategies in, in play at the moment that are attacking the HIV um, virus in different ways. And so while this one may not have worked, um, there, are other, there are two other uh, regimens that we have in, in, in large-scale in large, in large development in both in South Africa and in the rest of South and East Africa to try and evaluate whether these vaccine approaches will work. So um, we continue to work and we try and work in parallel. If we had to wait until each vaccine um, was finished before we could start a new one, we would lose decades of, of, of progress. And so we are hopeful that this vaccine regimen and the others that are in the field at the moment will help us. And um, the, other, the other vaccine trials will, um, are being executed, they're fully enrolled, and um, the results will become available as, we, as, the, as the trials progress. 
Uh, South Africa, as far as statistics go, still carries the biggest burden of HIV AIDS infections. With that in mind, how much pressure is there on South African scientists like yourself uh, to be at the forefront of um, any work that is being done to try and find uh, a cure? South Africa has to be on the forefront um, of the race to find either an HIV cure or to find an effective vaccine. The only place in the world where we can answer these questions is in South Africa. One, because we have the huge, a huge burden of HIV disease, and two, we have huge capability in terms of our scientists and our laboratories. And so if there's ever going to be an HIV vaccine or if there's ever going to be a cure, um, South Africa will play a large role in achieving these milestones. South Africa is integral and critical uh, to find in instruments to prevent HIV and also to contribute to HIV control. If we can't control HIV in South Africa, we're never going to control it anywhere. And so that's why this country is critical uh, to finding effective interventions to prevent HIV and to, to look at how to get people who are HIV positive into remission. All right, thank you so much for that, Professor Glenda Gray, uh, joining us uh, from, uh, from Cape Town, in fact, and giving us a sense then of where we are with that particular issue. As you heard, plenty more work still to be done.